Go ahead. Hello, everyone. Uh, we are Caster Wars Group Five. Um, uh, really quick, before we get into it, uh, Google changed uh, Chromecast to Googlecast, so we'll use those interchangeably during the presentation. So don't All right. So a little bit about us. Okay. Um, I'm Ken Rogers, and, and I worked on the audio and a little for, for the project and some UI as well. I'm Darren Edson, uh, IT major. I worked on pretty much all the code on the project. I'm Eric Kimball. Um, I was uh, art lead and did a lot of the animations. IT major as well. I'm Zach Crane. I did a lot of the modeling and I'm an IT major as well. All right, so today we're going to go over what we did, all the programming, all the coding, the di diagrams and all that stuff, but nobody really wants to see this, so we're actually not going to do that. <laughs> I want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> and we actually have that later. <laughs> so a little bit about the game. Uh, we decided to make a turn-based multiplayer strategy game, um, it's uh, powered by the Chromecast. Uh, we decided to do, to do Chromecast because Google, uh, the Google Cast is really cool. Uh, it's got all kinds of applications like YouTube, Hulu, Netflix, all sorts of streaming. It also supports games. Um, applications in Chromecast na natively run in uh, a special flavor of HTML5 and JavaScript, um, but Unity released a, 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 a plugin um, right towards the end of our design cycle, and we ultimately decided to go with that. Um, so we used. Googlecast for our hardware, Unity for our s software and uh, development engine. We use Tile to create our maps, Autodesk, Maya, and Mudbox to do our animation, modeling, and texturing, and then we also use Audacity for audio. Okay, so the sound of the game, the, 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 one big part of a video game is the audio has to have a wow factor to it. Um, I, I was, the other day I was reading an article that, that actually helped to explain this. Um, whenever you're playing a game, if you turn the audio off, the game becomes boring. You're just kind of watching something happen on the screen. But when you turn the sound back on, you, you become immersed in the game. You, you can hear the steps, hear the gunfire. And so the, 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 that's one thing that, that we really wanted to get incorporated in this game was some awesome audio. Um, one of the issues that I had was trying to find free music. Then again, if you're trying to find free something online, it's not going to be what you want. So, uh, so he, every unit had to be specially edited to make the audio sound exactly how we wanted. Um, the map was made um, in the, the, the it's software called Tile. Um, if you can start the, okay. Um, yeah, as you can see here, we, the, 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 the software lets us essentially paint a grid, and by doing this, it, it, it made the the initial map be able to be exactly what we wanted much easier and, and be on a grid. One of the cool things with the software is that it actually makes a j j j JSON array based off of your, the, off the mouse input, or the, 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 based off of the tile input. And so we, we, we can then use that in the background because we do have a defensive bonus based on the terrain of, of, of where the, the, the unit's at. A right, little bit of backstory about the game. Um, we basically had a world, and what if we had those, since that world was there, essentially, um, what if those, what, there were sections of walls uh, up all around the planet, so different um, competing factions would uh, would emerge on each different side, and then we bring the walls down, and then they fight. It's a simple backstory. Um, so, uh, gameplay works, is uh, it's a turn-based strategy game, so players will take their turns, um, and during your turn you can Move your units in a in a grid, like a map. Um, you will compete for resources. Where you will, um, if you get more resources, you can spawn more units, um, and then you can raise your unit caps. You can produce more units to keep fighting. Um, units fight uh, within their pre uh, predetermined range um, or uh, or attack abilities within whatever. So if it's melee, one square tiles, or if it's range for two, three, however many tiles. Um, Units will move around the grid and, and fight, uh, and then you can win the game by killing your opponent's units, all of them, and or uh, taking over their headquarters. For modeling, we use Autodesk Maya, uh, which is uh, professional grade animation and modeling software. Um, works seamlessly with Unity, so that was really nice. We can just drag the, the files in and it works. And then for texturing, we use Mudbox, um, which is 3D sculpting software, but we use it for its 3D texturing tools, and you can just one button click, swap those back into Maya. So it's really great. 
So we ran into quite a few problems uh, with the modeling side of things. Um, we uh, had originally painted skin weights onto the models uh, that allowed the joints to interact correctly. Um, the problem was is once we had bound our models to the, the skin, to the skeletons, the, um, if we moved anything, like changed the texture file, you go in and edit it again, it completely erased our skin weights, so we had to go back through and repaint those on. Um, it was kind of the same deal with the UVs being lost. Um, yeah, UV files are a way that we could paint textures on using Photoshop instead of Mudbox. Um, it's a very old way of doing the texturing. Um, we originally started doing that, but we found out it wasn't going to work because um, Maya kept losing her UVs, and so we just switched over to Mudbox. And then we did run into a few import errors with Unity as well. Um, they're supposed to work pretty flawlessly together, but Unity was not happy with the Maya binary file, and so we ended up having to use a Maya or a Maya export option as an FBX file, and got it to work just fine. Right, so for the hard part of the uh, project, the coding, uh, what, what actually happened was we're about 35,000 characters, a little over 6,000 lines of code. But uh, before we started the project, we had to research what frameworks, IDEs, what language we, languages we could use. Then from there, we had to figure out how to code and compile, uh, compile them. Then we had to figure out what we were what kind of stuff we were going to test, what were the, the endpoints that we wanted to test for. So after researching, we figured out for the frameworks, as Eric had said earlier, it was a JavaScript, a custom form of JavaScript. So what happens is a phone connects to the, the Google Cast, which connects to the, a server, the Google Play server, it gets the game, it ca and it sends it back to the, to the Google Cast, which then pushes the game out to all phones that are uh, connected to it. Well, the problem with that was that you had to program for each separate thing, and we'd have to spend a lot more time programming for each thing on its own. AOS and Android platforms. Right. So we thought, what if there was a way we could uh, just program one time and play on everything? Fortunately for us, as Eric said, uh, Google and Unity came out with a plugin. They came out with it uh, 3 December. To, uh, so right after we were done with uh, Capstone 1, right before we started Capstone 2. So that changed a lot of our, pro our project to how we're, which way we were going. The problem with that is it's still in beta version. So what it does is you compile, is you write all your code, you compile it in Unity, it puts it on the phones. From there, you have one phone that connects to the, the cast device, and every other phone connects to that phone as it runs as a host, as a server. So what we used for the IDE was uh, Unity 3D as the as the game framework, and then Mono Develop as the as the editor. That and it runs in C Sharp 3.0, which is kind of old. I believe the current version is 6.0. Um, so then comes for the for the coding part. Uh, starting with last year, around late November, early December, uh, I worked and uh, with a uh, Mizzou math alumni. And uh, we had to come up with an algorithm to figure out how much health we wanted to take away from the attacking. It's based upon the uh, unit, the attacking unit's power, the defending unit's power. Also, uh, each tile has a uh, attack bo uh, attack bonus, defense bonus. That's you know if they're in the woods, they can defend but they can defend themselves better than if they're on a road. So I end up we ended up just coming up with the equation of a straight line after we went through exponential formulas and other kind of formulas. For the attack and defense, basically how I ended up doing it was that once the, once you start the attack, uh, the you calculate how much health is going to be lost on the defender. If the defender is still alive after that, then the defender can counterattack. And then if the attack the original attacker is is still alive, then they both leave and the turn the turn is over for that unit and goes to the next unit. But if one or two of one or both of you dead, then you just kill them off. And for the turn, and for each turn, it's you start off, you double check that, make sure that there's actual more than one player. Obviously, if there's only one player left, then the game is won. Then you make sure that each player has units, st st at least one unit still alive, because if not, it could be somehow the script could have messed up and fought through. So you make sure that the units are still alive. Uh, and then you just get, you know, we do all the resources, commander's bonus, heal all the units. Do all the all that before we actually start the turn with each units, 
That way, whatever we do with the units does not affect all the, all the bonuses. So we uh, coded in C Sharp, compiled it, made, made out all the scenes, compiled it in uh, Unity, put on the phones, so, which led us to the testing. Well, unfortunately, because we're testing on phones, we had to compile every time we changed one little, th one little thing, a variable or anything, we had to compile and put it on the phone, which usually takes about two minutes to do. So the testing was a little more extensive than what we originally planned. Obviously, we ran into some problems. Like I said earlier, switching Unity was a problem because we were it was a complete shift of where we were going with our game. Um, also, when we switched to, to the plugin, it's like I said, it's in, it's in beta. So what uh, Google didn't have in there is that uh, if one phone connects to the Google Cast and you have another phone that tries to connect to it, what would happen was the first original phone would be disconnected and then the new one would connect. Um, also, there's no multiplayer uh, Chromecast support because it's on phones, and Unity does not have, they have a network uh, API in there, but it's not made to, for, for connecting phone to phone. Also, we had the problem, as I said earlier, with the algorithm for the health. So to solve the problems, I had to go in reverse engineer, and I edited Google's plugins code to make it where it's, uh, it does not disconnect the other ones. Uh, as you can see right here, I have a blog and I put some of what I did up on it. Um, also, I had to go in reverse engineer Unity's code, figure out how they, their networking API works, and then I had to write my own, basically had to write my own networking API to allow phones to talk to each other. And then as I alluded to earlier, uh, we worked with uh, a math alumni from Mizzou and uh, she helped us come up with how to, what uh, help and stuff to use. Um, unfortunately, we were going to have a uh, demo to show, but due to the problems I faced with the networking stuff, it put, it put me a little behind, and the game does work, but it's too buggy for me to, to ethically show to you, to everybody. That's our presentation, and any questions? <laughs>